Welcome back to Numerical Analysis, everyone. Today is Saturday, March 28th, and I wanted to take a few minutes and uh, look at the practice problem that was at the end of our last video from yesterday, from Friday. Um, and just so uh, everybody's aware, you can always get to those videos by going to our Canvas page uh, and then uh, clicking on the uh, Introducing Ordinary Video Equations link and that will take you to the page that has all the videos for uh, this part of our course. Uh, yesterday's video was video four on power series solutions for initial value problems. And so uh, if you haven't already, I would suggest that you uh, pause this video and really take a stab at the practice problem. Working through these things yourself is really the only way to uh, get really uh, familiar with the ideas. Uh, and so if you haven't already done that, please do. But uh, assuming you have done it, let's go ahead and take a look and compare notes and see what is involved. So um, the practice problem was to uh, look at this initial value problem and uh, first of all, extract the derivative information at the initial time, t equals zero, for all the orders of derivatives of the solution and then use that information to find the Taylor polynomials and Taylor series for the solution. And then finally, see if we could use the Taylor series to come up with a closed form solution for the initial value problem. Of course, the Taylor series itself is a solution, but a lot of times we'd like to see that solution in closed form. So let's see what that uh, involves. So the first step is to extract the derivative information. Of course, the initial value problem itself gives you the zeroth derivative at time zero. That's one. And, and then uh, it also gives you the first derivative because uh, dx dt, x prime, in other words, is 2x plus t. So when t is equal to zero, you get 2x of zero, which is one, plus zero, or just two times one, or two. So the first derivative at time t equals zero is two. For uh, subsequent derivatives, we have to do a little more work because we have to, first of all, differentiate the ODE to get, uh, for instance, the second derivative here. Uh, and so the, derivative, the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, but the first derivative is 2x plus t, and so I need to take the derivative of that. x is a function of t here, so we get 2 dx dt plus 1. And then we know what dx dt is from the initial value problem. It's 2t, 2x plus t. So we get this expression. And just uh, multiplying through by the 2 gives me 2 squared x plus 2t plus 1. So I'm going to leave it in that form because I'm looking for a pattern here. And then uh, plugging in t equals 0 gives us the value of the second derivative at 0. So again, we'll use the initial condition here to see that x of 0 is 1. We wind up with 2 squared plus 1, uh, or 5. Uh, let's keep this second derivative in mind because we're going to use it to compute the third derivative. The third derivative is the derivative of our second derivative. So that's 2 squared dx dt plus 2. Again, use what dx dt is. And we wind up with 2 cubed x plus 2 squared t plus 2. And evaluating when t equals 0 gives us 2 cubed times 1 plus 2. So 2 cubed plus 2. Uh, comparing that to the second derivative, it looks like there's some similarities here. Uh, maybe some differences as well. But let's, uh, let's plow on uh, and look at the fourth derivative. So that's the derivative of the third derivative. And that's from our previous step. Uh, and that turns out to be 2 cubed times d, uh, 2x plus t plus 2 squared, and then simplify. We get 2 to the fourth x plus 2 cubed t plus 2 squared. Plug in t equals 0 to get 2 to the fourth plus 2 squared as the fourth derivative at 0. And now we can really begin to see the pattern. The uh, coefficients start out by matching the, the, the order of the derivative, and then they walk down by 1, right? On the fourth derivative, you have 2 to the fourth x, 2 cubed t plus 2 squared. Going back to the third derivative, it was 2 cubed x, 2 squared t plus 2 to the first power. 
And even the second derivative follows that pattern. 2 squared x plus 2 to the first power times t plus 2 to the zeroth power. Notice, though, that the, the, the first derivative and the zeroth derivative don't quite follow that same pattern. And that's not an uncommon thing to happen here. The pattern sometimes will only kick in after one or two or a certain number of derivatives. But uh, kind of thinking we've been getting a handle on that pattern, you can take a couple more derivatives just to sort of verify that the pattern seems to continue, and it does. So you see the fifth derivative here and the sixth derivative so, uh, satisfying that same pattern. And then uh, we can conjecture then at this point that for derivatives of order n greater than or equal to 2, the nth derivative is 2 to the nx plus 2 to the n minus 1t plus 2 to the n minus 2, with the nth derivative being evaluated at 0 as 2 to the n plus 2 to the n minus 2. And that just comes from plugging in t equals 0 here and using your initial condition. Now, uh, it's a totally reasonable question to ask at this point is, you know, well, you kind of just guessed, right? I mean, that looks like the pattern, but how do you know that, for instance, uh, on derivative number 11, something squirrely happens and things change. Well, I think you, you really won't have that feeling if you actually work through this. You'll see how the pattern kind of cycles. But uh, for a totally rigorous uh, justification of this, you just do a little induction proof. Assume that the nth derivative is of this form and then prove that the n plus first derivative is of the same form with n replaced by n uh, plus 1. And so for those of you who are inclined, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, and you would have a completely rigorous um, argument that the derivatives follow this pattern. But even just without doing that, uh, working through the problem will give you a pretty ironclad sense that this is indeed the, uh, the correct formula for the nth derivative. So putting it all together, we have the uh, nth derivative at 0. Uh, is uh, 1 if n equals 0, 2 if n equals 1, and then our formula 2n plus 2 to the n minus 2 if n is greater than or equal to 2. And so that is the uh, derivative information extracted. The next thing we want to do is plug those, uh, use those values to uh, uh, form a Taylor series for the solution. Now uh, I have uh, put up a little um, sort of summary sheet for Taylor series and Taylor polynomials. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, there it is. Uh, and I'm going to post this right next to our uh, 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 video here. Uh, so you can download this and have it for reference. But uh, this just uh, reminds us of Taylor's theorem, including the bit about the remainders, which we will be using a little bit later on. And then uh, Taylor series. Uh, and I'm using the same notation that we're using in this section of the course, so uh, that should be helpful. And then some commonly used Taylor series. Probably the most commonly used one is this guy here for uh, e to the t. Uh, we're going to see that come into play in our solution for the practice problem as well. But you might want to download that sheet and uh, have it uh, at, your, uh, at your side for reference as you work through some of these problems. Okay, so uh, now that we've extr extracted the derivative information here, let's uh, use it to form the Taylor series. And so uh, this is just the generic form of a Taylor series. And these derivatives, uh, the kth derivative evaluated at zero, are uh, precisely these guys we found here, just the different index variable n. But I'm just going to use those values in uh, the Taylor, uh, the, the formula for the Taylor series. So uh, I need to uh, split off the k equals 0 and k equal 1 terms separately because they follow sort of this different pattern right here. So I'm doing that here. When k equals 0, you just get x of 0. And when k equals 1, you get x prime of 0 times t. We know x of 0 is 1 and x prime of 0 is 2. So those first two terms just turn into 1 plus 2t. And then the terms from k equal 2 onward, I use this piece of my derivative information for orders of uh, 2 or greater. And so uh, 
the xk of 0 gets replaced by 2 to the k plus 2 to the k minus 2. So that is the Taylor series for our solution. Um, uh, and we'd like to work with that a little bit and see if we can recognize it uh, as a familiar function from calculus. So let me just uh, peel off this the, the series here for a second from k equal 2 to infinity and work with that. And then we'll come back and uh, uh, tack on the, the, the rest of it here to get our full solution. So working with that series, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just simplify the numerator a little bit by factoring out the lowest power of 2, which is 2 to the k minus 2. If you factor that out here, you get 2 squared plus 1, or 5, which pops out of the sum. So we're left with this. And what I'd really like is the power on the 2 to be the same as the power on the t. Uh, you'll, we've seen this before, and uh, you'll see how it uh, works out here in a second. But to do that, all I need to do is write 2 to the k as 2 to the k times 2 to the negative 2, and then pop that constant 2 to the negative 2 outside the sum. Then you have 2 to the k times t to the k. And then uh, uh, I can combine those two as just 2t raised to the kth power. So this is what reminds me of our... Uh, Taylor series for uh, e to the x. Uh, if you uh, remember, uh, there it is here. And the way you want to think of that Taylor series is that you have something to the kth power divided by k factorial, the power factorial. And that's exactly what we have here, something to the kth power divided by k factorial. So I'm beginning to smell uh, an uh, e to the t in the mix here somewhere, or e to the something, and so that's what I'm headed for. The complication is that the sum starts from k equals 2 to infinity, whereas the sum for uh, e to the t starts at k equals 0 from infinity. So I need to deal with that. And that's what we're going to do on the next slide. You can write the sum from k equals 2 to infinity as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity minus the sum from k equals 0 to 1. And then use the exponent, the Taylor series for e here. This is e to the 2t. And then the sum from k equals 0 to 1, you can just write out. When k equals 0, you get 1. When k equals 1, you get 2t. So we've evaluated our sum now as e to the 2t minus 1 plus 2t, the quantity. So let's put it all together now. I have, uh, I need a 5 fourths times that sum. And then I need to tack on that 1 plus 2t. So I'm just putting all this together to get back to my x hat. So 1 plus 2t plus 5 fourths times our sum, which we now know is this. And you simplify that, and you get 5 fourths e to the 2t minus 1 fourth 1 plus uh, 2t. That's what's called uh, a closed form of the solution. But we actually need to verify that uh, this is actually the solution. We need to check, in other words. So let's just do that real quickly. Uh, we simply want to check whether our x hat solves the initial value problem. So first thing, check to see whether it solves the, OD, uh, the ODE. So I'm going to compute the left-hand side, of, uh, the derivative of x hat here. And I'm just taking a derivative. And there you see it. And then I'm going to compute the right-hand side, which would be 2x hat plus t. And so here I'm just doing that, 2x hat plus t. If you simplify that, you see that it's indeed equal to dx hat dt. So that tells us that the ODE is satisfied. And also we want to uh, verify that the initial condition is satisfied. So just plug in t equals 0 to our x hat. And so... Uh, you get 5 fourths e to the 2 times 0 minus 1 fourth 1 plus 2 times 0. 5 fourths minus 1 fourth are 1. So check that uh, is uh, correct. We wanted act our solution evaluated at 0 to be 1. So we're good there. So therefore, we can uh, now take off the hat. Uh, we verified this is indeed our solution, uh, x of t here. So... Uh, that is the power series uh, method of solution in action. It's very powerful. Sometimes the computations can get quite a bit more hairy, and uh, we'll have to deal with that at some point. But uh, your next homework, homework uh, 20, I believe it is, 
will ask you to go through this process with a uh, slightly different uh, ODE. So I hope this video will help you with that. Uh, as always, let me know if you have questions, comments, complaints, concerns, conundrums, any other contrivances you may uh, feel um, compelled to um, make. I uh, hope you're well. I uh, hope you stay well and uh, stay in touch. We'll be uh, back with you again soon. Y'all take care.